chew. This thing is a heap. Hello everybody, Engine Doc back with you again. Got another engine to look at here. This is a weirdo. This is an Andover. It's mounted up on this uh, old Ford garden chassis, garden tractor chassis. And dude, it is a heap. How you like it? A steering wheel. Hydrostatic. Here's the other side. It's a V-twin. Andover. It's out of a B-29 Super Fortress. World War II era bomber aircraft. These were the generator auxiliary power unit, whatever you want to call them. They were built in New York State by the Remington Typewriter Company back then. And somebody has uh, built themselves a toy here. I acquired this thing mainly for the engine because it's unusual. It's kind of weird. It's very weird actually. And I'm going to try to get it running. It's been setting for several years obviously. Um, that hood, <laughs> give you a front view of this. <laughs> this hood's got to go. I'm sorry. Got to go. So, uh, a lot of things aren't working on it. Of course, the engine's not running at this time. It's got a starter generator back here. That's pretty cool. I don't have a lot of light on the subject here right now. We'll let the farm machinery get by so I can talk. Got the door open today. It's got a pretty decent rear end in it. Just don't know who made it. I'll find out probably. Maybe a Peerless or somebody like that. Made it for Ford. This is some kind of a Ford garden tractor. If you guys recognize it, let me know. It's uh, pretty heavily built. Got a good steering box in it. I like the way the steering arm hangs out the side here. There's a lot of possibilities for that. So we're going to take a look at it here. I'm going to get started. Oh, you know, with uh, penetrating oil and trying to get things loosened up. It doesn't want to turn very well. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it here and go from there. The, uh, the tractor itself is kind of interesting about the ugliest thing I ever seen but that's okay ugly tractors need loving too so if you're interested in this old heap and mainly trying to see if we can get this engine to run stick around and uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff and we'll uh, mess around this thing and see if it's junk or see if it'll run. Stay tuned. Okay, while you guys weren't looking, I went ahead and took the engine out of this thing. And uh, I had to move it around a little bit, so uh, I wasn't able to capture any video of that. But anyway, um, got the engine out of it, and uh, it's over on the bench over there. And before I took the engine out, I did get it running. I used a little temporary fuel tank here and uh, was able to wire up the solenoid and get the starter working and uh, had it running I will show you a uh, a video clip of that right here of what I've been able to find out about this tractor 
is uh, it's a conglomeration of uh, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Uh, the original frame, uh, down in here you can see the oil pan there from the original engine. And this frame sweeps up here and uh, the, the rear end here uh, is, uh, it was made for Ford by, I believe, Jacobson. And if you guys know anything more about this, you might drop a comment uh, down below and we'll discuss it. But uh, then on top of that, uh, that hood I showed you in the first clip there was uh, Sears. I do believe these fenders are Sears. And of course right here is where the uh, steering system came out. I, it had a little Ross steering gear in it. I'll show you that over here. And I went ahead and took that out. These little steering gears are nice to, to have on hand uh, for different tractor builds. But I believe this dash also was a Sears. And uh, so, you know, it was a conglomeration. The story I got with it was it was a, a kid, uh, a few of these kids around the neighborhood around here uh, built these tractors and had fun with them. And uh, <laughs> they uh, learned to weld. I mean, there's got some, got some pretty good looking welds, I mean, for a, for a kid. The way I understood, maybe these kids were in high school or something, and this may have been a project in the neighborhood uh, you know, around to, to get these kids, uh, something to do. And, uh, I can tell if you look at this from, uh, this angle, the light's not real good there, but you can kind of tell it's been a wheelie or two maybe, uh, <laughs> on it. And the front end, the axle's bent and, uh, boy, it's just a, it's a mess, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of fun to look at. So, Let's uh, let's take a look at the engine now. All right, back over here on the bench. I uh, took the housing, the blower housing off here, and uh, it uh, revealed this fan. And I have already taken the bolts out of it. There's a row of bolts. Of course, all of them were uh, safety wired, and everything on this thing was safety wired, lock nutted, lock washered. Triple times the safety. Anyway, here's the fan. Won't be needing it for what I'm doing with it here. Um, then this is just a pretty, pretty nice flywheel here. Uh, this is the exhaust, of course. And then here's the, the two outlets that fed into the blower housing. And what would happen is the blower housing would exhaust the air, the hot air. It would actually take it in here and exhaust it out this port, out through the fuselage of the airplane and uh, get rid of the hot air and the exhaust at the same time. Uh, so uh, anyway, it pulled the air through the cylinders in this direction. And I'll turn around here. And there was a fellow in the neighborhood around here that built this housing and uh, so he could put, this is a, like a Chevrolet front crank pulley assembly and a stub shaft here that the, uh, get the drive shaft here. Here's the drive shaft for it. This was uh, on there and this went back to the rear end, this uh, double drive shaft. But anyway, a lot of work went into this and uh, I'll show you on this engine here, I'll give it a close up. The way this accessory drive was mounted, this is another block that I got with this unit. Got this block and a whole box of parts, extra carburetor, extra magneto, all kinds of stuff. But anyway, you'll see how this, when you look at this here in a minute, how this thing drove the accessory, which uh, probably back in the day was a, a generator to provide, provide power for the, the aircraft. But anyway, it takes air in here through these little passages, cools the fins and exhausts it out the fuselage. And uh, let me get you off the off the stand. I'll show you a little around here a little more. So uh, 
here's the magneto. This is the kill wire that comes out of the bottom of the mag. And of course it was all military, um, you know, spark plug connections and stuff. And uh, they've converted it over to a, a standard type plug uh, wire. But that's a Wyco mag. Um, here's the governor here and it it operated this lever matter of fact you can see it when I move that one you can see that one move and that operated the uh, uh, carburetor linkage and it's pretty cool here here's the uh, here's the oil fill and down in here is the dipstick which is pretty neat all aluminum, everything, even this, even this uh, sheet metal uh, air deflectors and stuff are aluminum. And uh, it's a pretty well thought out design. Around over on this side of the engine, we've got the oil pump and strainer. I believe that's a little strainer screen in there. I haven't been in there. See, all this is wired so it can't come apart. This was a fuel pump. And uh, I just rigged up a gravity feed system on it because the fuel pump was junk. I've, as you see, I can, I've taken it apart and boy, it had some old nasty fuel in it and it was, uh, it was nasty. I've been told that that was possibly Willie's Jeep fuel pump may work on this. Don't know. Here's a tack drive for the tachometer if you want, if they wanted a tack. Uh, and that's a, just a quick overview of the engine. And then over here is, is an engine block that uh, was uh, spare parts. But anyway, in here is, uh, is how it was driven. I assume there was a, a piece bolted on here and engaged in these teeth here. And uh, of course, as that rotated, it drove the accessory. But he did a really cool job of uh, of making that work. So that's pretty neat. Here's a view inside. Pardon the shaky camera. Here's a view inside the crankcase. Um, of course, this jug's off. That jug doesn't have a piston in it. And it's just parts in it, which is kind of cool. It shows you how it's made, how well it was made. Everything that didn't have a lock wire or a lock nut had a pal nut. These are all pal nuts backing up all these fasteners. So, anyway, I'm going to show you a video of this thing running on the bench here and what I had to do to uh, get it running on the bench. So, if you take a look at the nut that holds this flywheel on, it's split. And it's got a couple notches in it here. Well, I just went over on the lathe and turn this piece to go into my drill and uh, that fits in there and that pin engages in one of the slots and uh, that will allow me to crank it with a drill. So basically you just chuck this thing up in your drill and engage it in there. And... and I don't have enough hands to operate the choke and get the fuel and operate the camera and all that. But anyway, that's how I cranked it up and uh, it, uh, it runs great. So I'll end the video here. Uh, I'll end it with some footage of, it, of the engine running. And uh, if you're wondering about the oil pressure, it holds those 60 pounds. It, uh, it'll run up 60 pounds of oil pressure at cranking speed. And then it holds that, that pressure while it's running. But uh, kind of a cool deal. If you guys ever want to cost one of these, they're kind of fun to have. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Probably sell it. But, uh, you know, I just uh, thought I'd show you a piece of history here. Uh, it's amazing uh, how these things were made and how fast uh, they made these things and how many of them they made. They made thousands of these things. And uh, they took over that uh, Remington typewriter factory in, uh, in New York State during the war and built that particular factory, built these things for the war effort. So it was amazing.
the all the history and everything of that war and uh, all the the way the whole country came together to um, you know to produce products to uh, win the war so hey thanks for watching and uh, if you uh, like this stuff uh, leave me a comment and uh, like and subscribe and look for me in the next one thanks for watching